And the cleaver has been caught. and Climbers Pokemon fans, we're talking about episode 73 of Pokemon Horizons, and this was a roller coaster of an episode, not because, not because anything bad happened in it, okay, I'm gonna make that very clear, and nothing bad happened in the episode, I just was a little lost, because I was expecting some more beef between Lapras and Cleavor, the way they made it look like in the previews and stuff, but all we got was like, one Ice Beam, one at Stone Edge, and then like, I don't know, like an egg scissors and into a headbutt. I don't fucking know. And then all of a sudden they're like, we cool. And I'm like, bro, what is this? It's sorry, excuse for a battle between two heroes. Like, don't get me wrong. They were, they looked serious, right? They looked like they were ready to handle some business. But I was hoping for Mark. Man, that was disappointing. <laughs> but I said, nothing bad, okay? I, I'm glad that we got to see, I guess, like the backstory behind some of Lapras' scars. Because... Even in the flashbacks we've had before, Lapras was already hurt, right? But all of a sudden, like, these two gashes are now explained that Cleavor's the one that caused it. And you're just like, damn, are you sure you're not salty as fuck? Like, I know you guys went on a journey and stuff like that, but I'd be a little peeved if I got a permanent scar from who's supposed to be, like, a partner or, like, a teammate and something like that. Like, I, I, I would definitely be pissed off for quite a long time. Granted, I don't know how long it's been since they've been separated, but I would be very salty about that. I'm just saying, okay, that's my perspective. I wouldn't, I would, especially if we haven't seen each other in years and I never got an apology or at least a little bit of vengeance, I would have I would have gone in, <laughs> okay? I, personally speaking, I would have at least knocked the fucking sense in there. I don't know, I'm just saying. But other than that, I like what they did, okay? They, they're giving the kids more time to shine. And this is the first time that they've been themselves able to like fight one of the six heroes by themselves, right? Because I believe I didn't really fight with them. Okay, so we, we, we can cross that one out, right? But Lapras didn't give a fuck. And, and literally it was everybody else that, that dealt with it until they became friendly and shit. And then Rayquaza showed up, which caused a whole bunch of other shit to happen, right? And then the fucking Moltres, that bitch was all free, right? So... I'm glad that they gave the kids the spotlight here, and all three of them, like, were trying to, like, show their strengths in terms of, like, planning certain things to try to, like, defeat Cleavor, because Cleavor wasn't having none of it, okay? He, he dragged them into the Timeless Woods where all the fucking bamboo is, and, like, it, like, dragged them further and deeper into the forest, right? And, like, now it's like, oh, you can't, you can't cast me sleeping now, but my question is, I, like, I know they're not really throwing it off that Cleavor is blind, but the fact that it's using its hearing in order to ascertain where the opponent is when you can just visually see them. And I don't know. I don't really understand the purpose of this, but maybe it's just because he's a little slow, right? Cleaver is not necessarily known to be the fastest thing in the world, right? But I, I'm, I'm going to make that assumption that maybe that's like a quicker way for it to respond to the threats of like all these Pokemon coming at it, right? But they couldn't land a single hit, right? It kept dodging and blocking everything. <laughs> And it wasn't until, listen, I got, I always give Dot props for being like the, the tactics one, right? She She's like, I can come up with scenarios and different strategies depending on what's happening in the battlefield, right? And she was, she was doing stuff, right? She was coming up with plans and ideas and stuff like that. And it wasn't until Roy noticed the bamboo stuff that he gets like a great idea based on some like useless information that his grandfather told him, like who knows when, it's like, oh, bamboos are just full of air, right? So you could just make them pop when they heat up. <laughs> and then he had a crocodile just run around using flame charge, which caused all the bamboo shoots to start, like, popping left and right like fucking popcorn. And then the cleaver was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and that's why I said, like, you're not blind. You know what's happening. Like, so this disorientated so much that fucking Quacks was able to get a liquidation in and, and Florigato was able to get like an acrobatics in and like Crowler hasn't gotten a single hit in by the way but they're like bro what's, what's 
going on? Why do we deal with this shit? Right? And the crazy part is, this bitch, like, created a fucking, like, ring of, you know, like, the old school, like, ring of fires, but this one's like a ring of stone ages, right? Because it, it took over the whole vicinity that they were at, and, like, once again, free, your, your bodyguard duties are now no longer necessary, okay? I agree with that. But where the fuck were you? <laughs> Why do you leave the kids to go by themselves? But listen, they can handle the business now. But I'm just saying, you ain't earning that paycheck no more, man. <laughs> but, and then like, so they get out there and then like, they do all terrestrialize just to do like this final push to defeat Cleavor because now it's using Stone Axe. It's like, oh, Stone Axe is the signature move, which means it's like, it's strong as a tag. And that means it's on its last leg. And, like, it's really trying here. So if we just push it, we just push it and we're able to <laughs> We're able to take it down, but they all lost because Cleavor is too strong because they have yet to defeat the Six Heroes, which is perfectly reasonable. Okay, I'm not going to take this away from them. They all did very well. I'm very proud of all three of them. They did a fantastic job. It's just that the Six Heroes are too strong for them. I get that, but I'm glad they gave them the chance to be in the spotlight, and they didn't give Freed any leeway to become a hero here. That's one of the things I'm very happy about that they did in this episode. It wasn't like, oh, the kid is now lost, now it's time for free to save the day. No, 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 we didn't need any of that. And then Cleaver comes back and says, you know what, I'll go with you, right? And then we get the whole flashback of how Lucius and Cleaver first met, and Lapras was way smaller. And that's one of the things I really like that they're doing here, is that because all these Pokemon are from so long ago, right, even in the flashbacks, they see more of their, like, normal height and shit like what you would expect them to be right but now because they're ancient pokemon they're much bigger so like lapras used to be just slightly taller than lucius because lapras is supposed to be a the semi-decently large pokemon but now it's fucking huge right the same thing with the moltres <clears throat> like moltres looked decently sized in those flashbacks but now it's fucking humongous and same with the arvaliva arvaliva wasn't this big and now it's all fucking giant cleaver's the only one that i mean he didn't grow as much right um, <laughs> I mean, it's supposed to be like a tiny Scyther, so I, I can understand it. So, but it's still bigger than what you would expect the Cleaver to be. So, I'm, I'm glad that they're showing these height differences all the time, right? Because it makes you feel like, damn, these things are fucking old as fuck. <laughs> if they were this small before, and now they're giant. Oh boy, I guess the only interesting thing to know at the end of this episode, and I'm really curious how they're going to handle this, because I haven't mentioned it in any previous reviews since this season started, but in the opening sequence, like, there's a spot in the opening where they show Lucius with Gibeon, and there's, like, the third person in there. Um, which I, in my mind, was like, maybe that's, like, Briar's uh, ancestor or something else. But apparently there is officially a third person that Lucius talks about in the flashback. I didn't really catch the name. Well, I caught it when I was listening to it. But I don't remember it because it's still too fresh in my mind. So, apologies for that. But... Now we know that officially there was a third person with them on this journey. I'm just curious to find out what the fuck happened between him and Gibeon. Because Lucius is, at this point, I'm assuming he's dead, right? It's been long enough for this motherfucker to be gone. On top of the fact that he's supposed to be an ancestor, at least from speculations, that he's Liko's ancestor. Which means he's definitely for sure dead. So why the fuck is Gibeon still around? I don't understand. Unless, unless the mindset they're going with is... That Gibeon is somehow related to that other character that is in the flashback with Lucius, right? Maybe Gibeon's ancestor is the one that's in there. But at the same time, I'm not too sure. I, I, I'm not going to throw in too many thoughts yet. But I'm hoping we get more, more information as we start heading forward. On top of the fact that I think we're getting a flashback episode tomorrow um, of something in the Crystal Pool. So I'm very interested to see that. Also, my girl Diane is back. And I can't wait to see what they're going to be bringing in with her and how long she's going to be staying with us. Because I liked it when Diana was around. And especially now that the kids are stronger, I can't wait to see how they're going to like show her the improvements and stuff. Definitely looking forward to next week's episode. But I think that's going to be it for this review. Cleavor's caught. So we did good on them. They did it. And it was all, like, all three of the kids, it was all handled by them. So very proud of them. Perrin is gone. I guess you had her, your couple minutes of fame, whatever. Goodbye. <laughs> and I can't wait for the next episode. So we're going to leave it off there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have been your boy, Sirius Croxon. And I will see you guys in future videos, streams, shorts, and everything in between.